Hey everyone and welcome back to another part of our FAQ series. Today I would like to discuss with you about why you should have an Active Directory and Domain Controller for your Azure Stick HCI and why it's a bad idea to run it on the HCI cluster itself, especially when no other domain controller is available. You may already saw my company blog on the Petri knowledge base, which I will link in the description below. But today I would like to discuss it a bit further with you and discuss the major key points. So why do you need an Active Directory and a domain controller in the first place? That's because of a requirement we have still within Windows Server cluster. You require a DNS server or a domain controller to start up the cluster. That's a hard requirement without DNS, without uh, proper permissions. There is no option to start the cluster, so it will not start. Yes, now you say, okay, in Hyper-V, uh, there was the option to, start, uh, to put it on a local storage on the Hyper-V host, start the Hyper-V server, start the domain controller, and then was, I was able to start the cluster. Yes. That's true for Hyper-V, but that's no longer true for Azure Stack HCI. So what we have here is Azure Stack HCI is not supported to work with the local disk storage. Everything you should run, every VM you should run, you, you will run, should be placed on the storage spaces direct. So basically on the storage server cluster. Now there comes the issue. Before storage spaces direct, the storage cluster can start, the cluster service needs to start. The cluster service requires a domain controller, especially in storage spaces direct. And with that placed on the clustered storage, you will not be able to access the virtual machine configuration and virtual machine disk files to start the domain controller. So you have some kind of chicken egg problem. You cannot start the cluster because the domain controller uh, isn't available and you cannot start the uh, domain controller because the cluster storage is not ready. What should you do? Or how can you overcome that limitation? And here my blog post kicks in. So there are several uh, options on how you can solve that. If you have hardware available. So you have another server, virtualization platform, something like that. You can just create a virtual machine or install Active Directory domain services on the specific um, host outside of the HCI cluster. So that's how you normally have, have it in an enterprise environment. There is already an Active Directory. You just connect the HCI to that specific Active Directory and the virtualization hosts or the um, physical domain controllers will serve the Azure Stack HCI environment. But what about edge scenarios? So you're not near any domain controller. You don't want to run uh, additional machines in the environment where you're, you're working. For example, you're a retailer. You you just want to have one machine for your accounting systems, maybe as a jump host for your, um, for some reasons, collecting data whatsoever. And therefore you only want to have the cluster or a single HCI host running uh, within the retail store and no additional virtual machines. So what can you do or what options do you have? So first thing, you use a remote controller. So there's maybe a major site, a major headquarter, or some some kind of warehouse where you already have domain controllers running. Or you have an Azure environment or AWS or Google environment where you have domain controllers. So what what's the option uh, you have? You can just connect to those, building up a VPN tunnel through your branch gateway, which can be virtualized on the HCI but it shouldn't, to be honest. So it should be a physical device or something else. Connect to the main, uh, domain controller from your own premises, and then you can start the cluster and the cluster service by using that domain controller. Afterwards, when your cluster is, is running and is working, you can start domain controllers on the cluster itself. So like for branch offices, 
So you kickstart the um, the cluster from your headquarter, from your data center, from your cloud environment, and as soon as the cluster is running, you can then start local domain controllers to serve your users, to serve the, your clients, to have a better latency, to have a better performance for access and so on. For starting, you need to have the remote controller. With that design, you can keep everything pretty low when it comes to branch and edge connectivity, but you will then be able to, to kickstart your environment without having an additional machine in the network itself. So that's basically all. Summarizing it, you need to have a domain controller outside of the cluster to start the cluster. So you start the cluster services for Hyper-V and storage spaces within the HCI node. Local storage is not recommended, not supported. So you cannot put a domain controller on local storage in HCI. It's only an option for Hyper-V in Windows Server, but you still have the option to kickstart it remotely if you have a VPN access for the branch to the VPN gateway. And it's not recommended to virtualize the VPN gateways on the HCI nodes because the cluster is not starting, you will not get a VPN access, same issue. So there, you get yourself a small appliance for VPN, put it somewhere, and you would be happy with that. That's basically all for today. Have a great one. If you have more questions, use the comments, leave us a like, leave us a subscription. If you have more or if you have feedback for us, if there's something we, should, we can be, make better, what could we add, etc. feel free to also use the comments. And there will be more coming within the next weeks. Have a great time and bye-bye.